Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with instant mac and cheese. That's right, we're going to do a no-boil, no-bake, one-pan mac and cheese that can be made just as fast as the stuff from the box. Not to mention it's going to taste way better, since we're going to use real cheese and the ones we want. And I know that all sounds too good to be true, but it is. And what follows is video proof. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by bringing some cold, fresh milk up to a simmer on medium heat. And while we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and toss in some kosher salt, a little shake of cayenne, and a very, very tiny pinch of freshly grated nutmeg. All right, just a hint. In fact, if you're going to put too much, don't put any. And then we'll also go ahead and sneak in about a tablespoon of butter. And then what we're going to do once this comes up to a simmer is, believe it or not, stir our dry elbow macaroni directly into this milk. So yes, we're going to completely skip the boil the pasta step. And we're simply going to cook it in what will eventually be our cheese sauce. And one big tip here, do not undercook your pasta. All right, so do it to the full time it says in the package. And we don't have to stir this constantly, but we do want to stir it often. So at least every couple minutes. And of course, while that's cooking, in between stirrings, we can go ahead and grate our cheese. And this time I went with two kinds of cheddar, an extra sharp orange and a medium white. And the reason I'm going with this combination, besides I love the taste, I think that's going to produce the most attractive color. But anyway, once our cheese is set, we'll go back and check our pasta. And this is what mine looked like after cooking in that milk for 8 minutes. And then what we'll do once our pasta is cooked, is reduce our heat to the lowest setting, and then we will dump our cheese all in at once. And we will give it a stir until it just melts, which is only going to take a few seconds. At which point we're going to turn off the heat, and quickly cover this, and then let it sit undisturbed for exactly three minutes. And during that brief time, something sort of magical happens, which you are just about to see. Okay, so after letting it rest for three minutes, we'll go ahead and pull off the lid, and we will give that a stir. And as you can see, our sauce has thickened up beautifully, and those holes in our elbow macaroni have sucked it in through, I believe, capillary action. But don't quote me on that. I only have a two-year degree. But anyway, we'll go ahead and give that a stir, as well as taste it for seasoning. It might need just a little touch of salt. So I went ahead and stirred some in and gave it one last taste. And that's it. Once we think that's tasting good, we'll go ahead and serve that up immediately into a warm bowl. Since a professional never puts hot food in a cold bowl. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should be looking at one of the creamiest, most gorgeous mac and cheeses you've ever seen. And by the way, if you're thinking that looks fine, and I'm sure it tastes amazing, but my favorite part of mac and cheese is that crispy, crusty topping you get when you bake it. Well, don't worry, Chef John's got your back, among other parts, because we're going to finish this with some panko breadcrumbs that we've cooked in some melted butter until they're golden brown and crispy. And that is going to very effectively mimic the top of the baked casserole version. So we will sprinkle over a few spoons of that, and all will be right with the world. And that's it. We'll go ahead and grab a spoon and go in for a taste. And despite all the shortcuts, and this only taken about 10 minutes to make, that, my friends, is just as good as any mac and cheese you'll ever have. Plus, unlike the much harder, much more time-consuming baked version, if we happen to want a little extra crunch, we can toss on some more crumbs any time we want. And yes, I will admit, I thought I invented this when I first tried it. But then it became quickly apparent that like a thousand other people had thought of this before me. But since I didn't know that, it still counts. And of course, instead of the crumbs, or in addition to, we could do things like chopped bacon or sautéed mushrooms or grilled vegetables or whatever else you want. I mean, you are after all the Janis Joplin of your mac and cheese topping. And there are not many things that wouldn't be great on top of this. And since the possibilities are pretty much endless, I should probably sign off and let you get started. So I'll just finish by saying I really do hope you give this a try soon. And head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.